Oh, it says the content of this meeting is being sent to a third party. That oh, okay. So that's all right. Um, Lynn Powell, are you a new student? Welcome, if you are. Nice to meet you. Oh. Are you here because of our artist of focus today, Mr. Pei Ming? Perhaps. I am not an expert on him. If you probably know more about him than I do if you're here just because of him. Shall we begin, Laura? It's 10.05, or do you wanna give everybody another minute? I'm ready if you... Oh, gosh. <laughs> go ahead. I'm trying to uh, make some more space. On the computer, so you can go ahead and begin. Okay. Good morning, everyone. I'm so thrilled to be back with you today. I'm going to start by saying I'm so sorry that we missed last week. That is the first time in all the years that I've been teaching for the Hoboken Library that we've ever actually missed a class. I don't even think we missed a class during COVID. So, uh, mega apologies. But I am, as always, thrilled with the Hoboken Public Library for allowing us to have these hybrid Art with Liz classes. And I welcome you all, whether you're here in person or working from the comfort of your own home studio. This is our final class of 2023, which makes it really exciting to me. I want to say happy Kwanzaa to those of you out there and here who may celebrate Kwanzaa. It is the second day. Uh, happy day after Boxing Day for those of you who celebrate Boxing Day. And we are now between Christmas, Hanukkah, and New Year's celebrations. So I hope all of you had a wonderful holiday season and that Santa and whomever gifted you uh, very generously. Hope you got many new art supplies mm -hmm. under the Christmas or Hanukkah bush, whatever you celebrate. All right, so let's begin. We're going to start, as usual, by focusing on a particular artist. We're going to look at and discuss his work, and then we're going to talk about the project that you can do on your own today. This artist, for me, is someone completely brand new. Um, I discovered him when I was looking on the internet for artists who use light and dark in a striking and dramatic way. And Mr. Pei Ming definitely uh, fits that category. He was born on December 1st, 1960 in Shanghai, the second of four children. And according to the information I found about him, he was born into a very poor family. Let's just go right to the slideshow that I created of his work. And you can just start immediately by looking at his images and start making a decision about what you think of his work. Here we go. Where is the play button? I don't know. All right, we're just gonna 
forge ahead. His family was a family of factory workers. His father worked in a slaughterhouse and the family lived in a Buddhist temple for a time. I think this picture is recognizable to you. Obviously it is a portrait of president, former president Barack Obama. And Mr. Pei Ming made his name and claimed his now current fame in the art world for these kinds of portraits. They are quite large. They are almost mural sized portraits, almost entirely done in shades of gray. rather abstract, although realistic enough that they are incredibly recognizable. The proportions are quite accurate. Mr. Obama has tiny ears, right? Even though they fit proportionally within the face. He likes to use dramatic lighting. Look at the beautiful highlights on the forehead, the cheeks, the nose, and the lips. Little bit of dramatic highlight on the chin. So Ming grew up during the Cultural Revolution in China from 1966 to 76. And he learned painting in propaganda classes at school. At the age of five, Daniel, at the age of 14 in 1974, he created, and this is in quotes in the biography that I have for him. He created, it's Obama. He created a propaganda studio in his spare time. So I'm not sure what that means. Propaganda studio is in quotation marks. Well, the name's David. It, 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 is a, it is a place where you create uh, propaganda. I guess, but I'm not sure why propaganda is in quote, quotation marks. Maybe it doesn't. Not, maybe it doesn't. His studio that he created is not going to do propaganda. Yeah, maybe it's ironic. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking, that the term propaganda is kind of ironic. That his artwork wasn't intended to actually be propaganda, that maybe he hid it behind the idea that it was propaganda when in fact it was anti-propaganda. I'm not sure. Let's go on to the next one. I, I'm sorry, what? Sure. Not a problem. I can't seem to go backwards, Laura, and I cannot I cannot click on anything. I have no access to my mouse when I'm in the slideshow. I we have this problem. I cannot go to stop share until the slideshow is finished. Okay, so well, let me just say what I was going to say about the Obama one. Sure. You know how you say when you do portraits that you oh, wait. should always put that white <clears throat> dot to show the light in the eye? Yeah. Yes. Well, one of the eyes had it, and the other one didn't. did not. So one side looked more alive because it had that white dot, and the other one, I mean, you can really see the difference, which you put the white dot in or not. Mm. You know that the white dot on the eye is in our state happening. We call it highlight. But it's a, it's a reflection of the yeah, eye. Yeah, we call it highlight. It's a mama. Okay. I got it. Right. Big again. Okay, so you hit the escape and the pad. No, the escape. Uh, oh, something like that where you tap twice. Okay. Thank you, Laura, for fixing the rest. Much more living than the other side. 
Okay, so folks at home, I don't know if you're hearing our conversation. I'm going to um, share with you what, yeah, it's, what it's, we're talking it's, about. I like Oh, that's the paint. He allows the paint to actually drip. That's what those white lines are. Very good question. So it is very drippy. This is this is acrylic paint that he uses, and he allows the paint to drip. That's part of his aesthetic. So the, the, the drip is the black. The white. The white. It's you're asking about the white lines, yeah. correct? Yeah, so he lets the paint drip. And we're also talking about the fact that the left eye in this portrait has that little white dot in the eye where the retina is open and allowing light into the eye, but it's less visible in the right eye. So Heather was sharing that she felt more light was being allowed to enter into the left eye than the right, and that that made the left side of Obama's face look more alive than the right. And people were, I think, agreeing with her. I do, because uh, actually, when I went to animation school, uh, my life drawing teacher did also told me that this is why when you, even when you draw cartoons, uh, it, it, you draw the highlight of the eye, because that this, usually the eyes are where you, you feel the light of both the characters. Yes, that's why we call the eyes the window of the soul, because that's where the personality of a person shines through. And that little white highlight, if you're trying to make a lifelike, realistic portrayal of someone, that little white highlight really makes a difference. What do you think of the, the white lines in the portrait? Do you like it or not? I and, think they're distracting. Okay. Stephanie, was that you? You think they're yes. distracting? Yeah. What? There's no dripping up high. Well, there is, but I think it's less visible because there's more white in the forehead area. But there is definitely dripping. So the dripping is black. Yes, when you when he drips into the black and dark gray areas, it's more visible because of the contrast. I just wonder what the purpose is. Yeah, I don't know. It's posters on city streets, and they're a little bit marked up, and like parts of them are are. The weather is Not, weather has yeah. Weathered or ripped away. Yeah. It could be he's trying to recreate the feeling of a damaged poster on a on a wall, on a city scene, that kind of thing, to create something that's more like graffiti. Mm -hmm. A poster that's partially torn away. I don't know. Someone just said it's his style. Maybe this is just the way he paints. We're going to see. Good point from Eileen. Is this what he always does? Um, and here we go to the next slide. Ming applied for admission to the Shanghai Art and Design School, but failed the oral test. There's an oral test for entry. He failed the oral test because he stuttered. He has a stuttering problem. Yes. And then in 1979, at age 19, he decided to leave Shanghai and eventually emigrated to France in 1980. Hmm. Not seeing too much dripping in this one, but it's still that kind of heavy, thick layers of paint. This, I believe, is his father, a portrait of his father. He did many portraits of his father. Huge, giant in size, also in shades of gray. The head looks 
Yes. Well, I think frequently that happens with us older folks, but. His shoulders come right up to his ears. But we start to fold inwards as we age. I don't know, but you're right. The head is huge compared to the rest of the body. It does look incredibly photographic, particularly since it's in black and white. Absolutely gorgeous use of white highlight. Well, also the black, like the black on the left side, like really makes that side just sort of the shadow. Yes, behind the head, you mean. Very yes, and I think the eyes are strikingly beautiful, penetrating. There's a lot of feeling in this portrait. Notice, because we, just to give you a heads up, we are going to do portraiture today, but I want you to notice how large the human nose is. We tend to shortchange that when we do portraits. This is a mistake that all artists make. We tend to think of the nose as small, but it is not. It fills up most of our face. As you can, as you can. Usually you see Asians, they, 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 some of them have a lot of smaller noses compared to the average human. I don't know if that's true, Daniel. I think Maybe. nose size varies not according to racial characteristics, I mean, but according, hard. it's all in relationship to the size of a person's eye, and we're going to talk about that momentarily. Maybe, so, necessarily. Maybe because I'm thinking on a friend that did have a uh, Okay, so a specific person. Yeah, that's probably true. So, great observation, Daniel. We had, that's a wonderful point that you bring up. The human face varies so much from person to person, and we need to really start looking at the face today and noticing those differences between individuals. So true. All right, so he was in France, and there he enrolled in the, the Ecole des Beaux-Arts of Dijon, in September 1981, where he met the French conceptual artist Sylvia Bossu, whom I never heard of, but he studied with her. Can you just define what a conceptual artist? A conceptual artist is someone who is more involved with ideas than they are with the finished artwork. So probably you can say that about Pei Ming's work. Although he seems to be very much preoccupied with celebrities. <laughs> he has made his name by painting celebrities. Now, what that means to him conceptually, I'm not sure. But it sure has made him a lot of money because of the fact that we recognize and relate to celebrities visually, what that means to him idea-wise, I'm not sure. I don't know enough about the concept behind his work. But good question, Eileen. I, I don't know who this person is. So Susan is trying to enter. Uh, Laura, thank you. I don't know who this person is, but I love this portrait. Um, what do you guys think? Why? Oh, interesting. Heather said it looks like his face is a landscape. Can you elaborate? Between white and dark and black, it's perfectly balanced. Those shades, it just calls to me. I don't know what it is. 
Okay, cool. Yeah, it is something, it's something about it. And the body, how it it, it just is sort of fades into the background. Yes. There's a lot of white in this image. I try to enlarge the face so you could see the face in more detail, but I was unable to because most of this image is white background, um, which is unusual. Yeah, the hair um, accentuates the the dark hair, yeah, Eileen. Face being long. Yes. And oh, also here's another new the student. The texture of the hair is captured there. Yes, it is. Yes. Oh, this is, excuse me, folks, here. This is Karen. Karen, welcome back. Nice to see you back. Awesome. All right, so in... 1987, Ming renewed with the portraits. He refreshed himself uh, with portraits of Chinese communist leader, the Chinese communist leader, Mao Zedong. And in 1991, he had his first solo exhibition at the Centre Pompidou in Paris. This is a big deal to have a solo exhibition at the Centre Pompidou. If you've never been to Paris, it's a huge museum in Paris, and that earned him his international recognition. Is that the one that's going to be in Jersey? Yes, we're going to have a mini, thank you for reminding me, we're going to have a, a small gallery Pompidou right here in Journal Square in Jersey City, I think in 2024. Mm -hmm. Oh, and Courtney is waiting to be admitted. <laughs> This again may be his father. In 1999, he set up portraits of children from Soweto at the Pantheon in Paris and monumental gray paintings of French politicians at the Venice Biennale in 2003. Oh, uh, maybe. Look at the gorgeous use of light and dark in this image. Very strong. When you do that, do you consciously think about you're going to do dark and light? I'm sure. And I'm sure he had his model sit in a situation where he lit them with spotlights so that the, the shadows were very dramatic. The light projected onto the person was very bright so that they were sitting in deep, dark shadow. And where do you think the light is coming from in this painting? From the left, excellent, yes. So the light was coming down from the top of his head on the left-hand side of the image. There might be two spotlights, one coming from underneath on the left and one coming from the top of his head on the left as well. He's also known for his epic sized portraits of Bruce Lee, Pope Jean Paul II, Obama, as we saw, Mona Lisa and his father. I have no idea who this attractive young man is. But very loose again, very loose with thick, heavy paint. In 2006, his monumental portrait of Dominique de Villepin, then the French first minister, was exhibited at the Grand Palais and has been interpreted as a half reverent, half ironic tribute to the ego of politicians. Again, dramatic bright light in this image. I imagine he does this, these works quite quickly.
He has a very kind of fast, powerful brush stroke. Who does he remind you of? A little louder. Van Gogh. Yeah, very similar to Van Gogh. The strokes, not the strokes are that kind of fast, mm -hmm. impassioned, heavy, determined. I thought he was Rasputin. He looks like Rasputin. What I think Rasputin probably looked like. Never have met the man, but the heavy beard, the wild hair, the kind of crazy eyes. Yep. It looks like he used like a palette knife. He could have been using a palette knife because the paint is laid on so thickly. Yes, it's possible. I believe they're acrylics. Yes. Again, this this artist, Jan. Pei Ming is new to me, so I don't have a lot of information, Heather. Sorry. His first solo exhibition in the United States was at the David Zwerner Gallery in New York in May 2007. And in 2009, Ming's show, The Funeral of Mona Lisa, was held at the Louvre featuring a self-portrait and a painting of his father, both in death. So this is one of his drawings. Um, let me see if I can minimize. No, I don't know how Laura made my mouse come back, but I'm afraid to try at this point. <laughs> I can't do anything when the slide shows on it. Yeah, it's it's not working for me. It's changing the slides, but I want to hide the this. Let's not worry about it. So this is one of his drawings. Looks very different, obviously, because it's done in different media. This one's very different in, in feeling. That's why I included it. He's shown all over the world. And he's in the collection of the Centre Pompidou, uh, the Musée des Beaux-Arts in Dijon, the Honolulu Museum of Art, the National Gallery of Australia, the National Museum of Modern Art in Tokyo, the Museum Ludwig, and the Shanghai Art Museum. That was a little bit more cartoony compared to the other one. It does indeed. Uh, I agree with you. Uh, I think I like that one better. Okay. Because sometimes when, sometimes uh, when the more realistic you make things, it's, it's impressive, but it also gets kind of boring. So. That's an interesting take, Daniel. Okay. So Daniel likes this one better because he finds it more interesting than the others. It is less realistic for sure. This one really looks like he used a palette knife to, to put the paint on. This person we know, right? Who is this? Picasso. This is Pablo Picasso. And this one is the, the shades of gray are more in a blue palette, blue family palette. Equally dramatic. How are you, Darian? Darian, take a seat. Good morning. Another less realistic but equally effective portrait. And we're, these are the last two images now. I wanted to show these because now there's a little bit of color entering into his work. And I wanted to show this one because it's so incredibly different from everything we've looked at so far. All right. I'm going to stop the share. And I want to do a very quick 
demo of different materials that you can use, different media that you can use in doing portrait work. Those of you at home, now is a good time for you to gather up any image of a human face that you might want to use. But I'm also going to put up probably Obama, the portrait of Obama, for those of you who cannot find a good portrait that you might want to copy. Folks at home, you could also do a self-portrait. Look for a mirror that you can look at in to do your portrait work today. But our goal is to create a portrait, preferably in pencil, charcoal, or graphite. If you want to use paint, go ahead. Those of you who are here, I have not brought paint today because I would prefer that you work in pencil, graphite, or charcoal. All right. I did send out an email that you could bring in photographs uh, of family members, etc. And so now we're going to set up for the demonstration that I'm going to do. Those of you who are here, you can start gathering materials from the back. I did bring in colored drawing materials if you're feeling like you must use things in color. Um, you may. All right. My mouse seems to have again disappeared. Okay, good. It's back. So folks at home, I hope you're getting stuff that you need. Paper. Number two pencil is the best tool ever for doing portrait work. A photograph, preferably a photograph of a person facing forward. And large format so that you can see the entire face. Bigger is better so that it's easy for you to see the person's face. Folks here, go get your stuff at the back. I did folks in the magazines um, that may or may not have good photographs in them, particularly the best ones are particularly the New York Times Sunday Magazine section usually has good photographs of people. Number two pencil, which is in here, is the best. I'm going to demonstrate how to use the stumps for blending. These are the stumps, perfect for blending. Tightly rolled paper, they're great for blending when you're doing shading. I've shown how to use them before. I'm going to show how to use them when I when you're using pencil, charcoal, or graphite, they're a wonderful tool to use. Yes, keeps your fingers from getting messy. And it's also just fun to use. I got some great pictures. So we're going to be reviewing techniques for doing portraits, as well as different media that you can use for drawing. So Laura is setting up the camera, everyone at home, 
It's just going to be another minute if you're waiting on that. Fine. I move spotlight, I think. Okay, a few things about proportions of the human face. First of all, the human face is an oval. It is symmetrical. If I were to draw a line with the face, the same on both sides. You can measure human proportions by eye length. I'll put the eraser end of my pencil here and put my fingers at the other side of my eye. That is an island. You got to start. Yeah. I'll start again. Yeah. Oh, so human face is an oval. It's symmetrical. It's same on both sides. And you can measure human proportion by eye length. I'll put the eraser in my pencil here. Put my fingers on the outer corner. That is the length of one eye. The distance between my eyes is one eye length. My nose, from the bridge of my nose to the tip of my nose, is one eye length. That's a wonderful measurement tool. Another way to see proportion and size, if I drop my pencil in a straight line from the middle of my eye, straight down. It hits the outer corner of my mouth. Everybody see that? Sure. Isn't that amazing? I just love when I can demonstrate that. So the inner corner of my eye hits exactly the outer corner of my nose. Inner corner of my eye hits the outer edge of my nose. The upper edge of my ear is right at my brain. The lower edge of my ear hits the bottom of my nose. Remember I was amazed when I looked at how little Obama's ears are, and yet they fit perfectly in that corridor between the top of his nose and the bottom of his nose. That's the same for every person on the planet. Let me show that again. So the upper edge, and you can do this to yourself, the upper edge of your ear, it's your brow bone. Brow bone. Here? This is your brow. Bottom edge of your ear hits the bottom edge of your nose. That's enough to start drawing with. Okay? Again, and more, I'm sorry, now we can go into the paper. <laughs> all that great focusing on me. So the human face is an oval. Notice how large I'm making my oval. The larger you draw, the more room you have for error. Okay? I like to draw it with a number two pencil. It's lovely and soft, and you can erase. Erasure is a good thing. I'm going to go over it again darker so folks at home might be able to see. Oval means it's larger and wider at the top, narrower at the bottom. Okay? I like to do a guideline to show 
that the face is symmetrical. I'm not going to make it too dark because I want to erase that. The eyes are almost halfway down the face. The nose is halfway between the eyes and the chin. The lips are halfway between the nose and the chin. So I put guidelines for each. I like to draw the eyes first. The eyes have several parts. You might want to look at me. Those of you who are here you might want to look at me. Excuse, can I ask? Oh, there's the chat. Sorry. We have the upper eyelid. We have the eyeball with all the parts. I always forget the name to the part. Yeah. <laughs> the colored part, which I think is the cornea, you have the retina, and you have the pupil. Is it the iris? In the iris. Thank you. You also have the lower lid very narrow piece of skin underneath, and you have eyelashes. And you also have the tear ducts. You have inside here, a little tear duct on the outside. Okay? Can I ask a question? Absolutely not. Look at your eyes. Look at me. <laughs> um, you said, like, you have the eyebrows, then you have the, what? Called the next one. Upper lid. Now, what, is, that the, is that the shadow part, or is that where your eye, eyelashes are? Where the eyelashes are. Okay. The, it's in shadow. Why? Why is the upper because, lid on everybody? Because your eyebrows are over it. Why? To the light the bottom. Yes, why else? Do, do our eyes stick out like our nose does? No, why? They're inside. They are recessed into the skull. That's why the eyes are in shadow. Even when we're in this fluorescent light, it really isn't casting any shadow on our eyes at all. But the eyes, if, if you take your fingers and gently feel around the eye, you can feel the skull, right? You can feel the eye socket. Your eye, the soft part of your eye is sunken into the skull. And that's why you always see shadow around the eye, no matter what the age of the person. So it has nothing to do with the fact that, you know, older people have dark shadows around their eyes. It's about the fact that our eyes are recessed into the skull. All right, so brows. I like to start with the eyebrow. They're different on every person. And I do that pretty fast. I can always go back and change if I need to. The upper lid, next. Now, this is where each individual is very different. The space between the brow and this line. There is a line for everyone of the inner lid and the outer lid where the lashes grow is different on every person. Some people have heavy upper lid. Some people have barely any upper lid at all. And you have to notice that. When I wake up in the morning, my this skin here is so puffy. I can't see my upper lids at all. So you need to look at each individual to see. Everybody's different, so I like to start there. I'm looking at a lot of different people now. I'm not trying to recreate any particular person. The, this inner line follows the brow, and it is as long as the person's eyebrow. Excuse me, Liz? And then comes the quality of all someone's eyebrow. Oh. All right, somebody at home has a question. How can I help you? Hi, thank you. I just wanted you to repeat the proportions uh, of the face. It's halfway to the... Sure. 
Can you see me now? Yes. Okay. Oh, no, I can't see your face. I can see the paper. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, I'm going back to the paper. All right. So, first of all, now I can show on the paper, Laura. You don't have to get up. The human face is an oval, and you can measure by eye length. So, the human eye, you can measure by laying your pencil from one corner of the eye and put your fingers at the outer corner. That's an eye length. The distance between the eyes is an eye length. The nose is from the bridge of the nose to the bottom of the nose is an eye length. So I have to move my guideline up a bit. Maybe you need to be very accurate today. That if I drop from the inner corner of the eye, straight down with my pencil, that's where the outer corner of the lip is going to be. And I'm approximating on this side. Oh, no, that's, sorry, backtrack. From the inner corner of the eye is where the outer corner of the nose will be. From the pupil straight down is where the outer corner of the mouth will be. So that's approximately here. All right. So once I've done the upper eyelid, then I do, I go into the eyeball and I draw the colored part of the eye. It is not a complete circle because why? The lower lid covers most of the white of the eye. Very little of the white of the eye is exposed because both the upper and lower lid cover. All right. Now, this is pencil. So when you use pencil and you're ready to do shading, use the side of the pencil. That's what I like to do when I'm doing facial shading. And here's where the beautiful stuff comes in. You can spread your shading with the stump best effect. You can also use your finger, like I'm doing now. And the inner corner of the eye is where you will see most shadow and also underneath the eye because that is where the eye is most recessed into the eye socket. The colored portion of the eye must be colored in your drawing. This is an error that people always make, even the most experienced artists. Even people with very pale eyes, you've got to color this part of the eye. It is not white. And notice how large it is. It fills most of the white of the eye. And don't forget the black portion of the eye. And please leave that little tiny spot of white show the light is entering into the eye. Otherwise, as Heather noted earlier today, it makes it look like the person is dead. If you look closely at a person, you'll notice there is an outer ring, a little bit darker, 
around whatever this part of the eye is called, but I can never remember. Somebody look it up. And lashes is what I add last. Everybody's lashes are different. Some people have thick, heavy lashes here. have to really look at people to see how they grow. Don't forget the lower lid. There is shadow under the well, underneath, but the, just the line. Oh, and then you can do the other eye, and then no. So, the nose is all about shading. I'm going to my guideline here that I made earlier. This is where I start first. I have done, actually I start here first, at the bridge of the nose. I like to define, and remember the width of the top of the nose is an eye length. The other eye is going to be here. I define the top of the nose with the shadow. You're always going to see shading here. And depending on where the light is and how dramatic the lighting is, there's going to be more or less shadow here. But there is no outline here. We don't outline around the nose. We model the nose almost as if you're drawing it or you're molding it out of clay. You define it by building it up with shadow. Then I drop down to the outer edge of the nose because there's shadow here. Again, I define form and shape of the nostrils by the shadow on either side of the nose. Then it gets interesting. I like to look at the round ball or the tip of the nose. That's where everybody's nose is different. Some people have a long pointy nose. Some people have a wide tip to their nose. That's where you have to look. Everybody's nose shape is different. And it's all determined by shading. So you have to look at the shape here. Start with light shading. You can always add more as you go. It's much harder to get rid of heavy, dark shadow than it is to add more red. And it's starting already to look a bit like a note. You might want to start erasing some of your guidelines. They may be distracting at this point. And usually one side of the nose is darker than another. So you can now start looking at the side of the nose. Notice the way I'm curving my shadow. Why do you think? I'm not doing the shading straight up and down like this. I'm curving my shadow like this. Why would I do that? Anybody? You're following the eye. I'm following the shape of my nose. Right. The nose is not flat, it's curved. So I want my shadow to follow the form that I'm looking at. It's curved over the top and along the side. I'm keeping it light. And I'm blending. 
Landing is the way you make things look three dimensional and not flat. If you don't blend, it's going to look two dimensional, not three dimensional. So you have the form of the nose is starting to evolve. I didn't use any lines. So I'll shadow. Okay, I'm not going to do too much more on the nose because you guys are going to have any time to do your own drawing. If I keep up with this demonstration. You can do a little bit with the nostrils. I caution you and to obsess about the nostrils <laughs> and make them too dark. It gives the portrait a cartoony feeling if you make the nostrils too dark. Okay, the mouth. The mouth to me is the funnest part of all. These guidelines are a little too wide. I'm going to change them. Everybody's lips are different. And again, I don't use lines. I use shading. Some people have beautiful, gorgeous, full lips. Others like me have thin lips. Shriveling with age. I am using shading. I am not using the tip of my pencil. And the outer edges of the mouth are always darker. Notice the way I'm making the shadow curve because, hello, guess what? Our lips are curved. And I'm blending. The lighter portion of the lips are in the middle because that's where the light hits the mouth first. That's where the lips stick out, right? Mm -hmm. The only where you're going to see a dark line in the lips is in the middle where the lips come together. Okay, and then the last thing I start doing is looking at the shape of the face and where the ears are. Remember, ears are in this corner here. The ears don't grow this way. They are very close to the side of the head. Close. So the space between the side of the head and the edge of the ear is more like this. Not so far away. I just learned scientifically, did you know this? Horrifying what? <laughs> the ears and the nose get bigger as we get Because they're made of part of the poor Obama. So now you can start adjusting. Maybe the chin's a little bit too big. Maybe this person has more of this shape chin. So you can start looking at the shape of the face now that you've got the features down. Maybe they have the chin that protrudes. And you can do the shadow for the chin, etc. Maybe the forehead is too tall, this looks rather large. So you can cheat now, you can start adding hair here. Yeah, go wild with the hair. 
And I wanted to demonstrate, the final thing I'm gonna demonstrate, graphite. This is a graphite crayon. The inside of a pencil is made from this wonderful stuff. If you wanna do really dark shading somewhere in your drawing, graphite is yummy. never used graphite before, you want to test it out first, play around with it, experiment with it. Graphite is it's really good for, at the end, when you want to do heavy, dark detail. So, for example, this person has really dark hair. It's great for that kind of work. Charcoal. Charcoal is a marvelous drawing tool, especially when you want to do shading, because it really blends so easily and beautifully. Especially for those really dramatic shadows. Easier to use when it's broken. You can also use it for fine lines. And if you're feeling really bold, you can draw the sharp. Oh, that's three years from now. Have fun, and don't be angry with yourself, particularly those of you who are just starting to do portraiture. Take it slow and easy, play. Oh, I forgot to show, you can do wonderful work with pastels, because pastels blend beautifully too. I'm gonna now put a picture up on the screen. That was a long demo, right? Yeah, it was good. Mm -hmm. So folks at home, now I'm gonna put a picture up on the screen that you can copy if you don't have a picture that you can use at home. And those of you here can also use the picture that I'm gonna put up on the screen. But I did a very long demo. The folks here were so absorbed in the demo, I, I couldn't bring myself to stop. All right, where is my folder with images? Here we go. Do we want the Obama picture? I thought it was pretty cool. And those of you at home, you also have the option, I should have mentioned this earlier, forgive me. You have the option of going on the internet. You can Google line drawings. You can Google master line drawings. You could copy any line drawing by Angra or Delacroix. Really challenge yourself. The more complicated the portrait is, you opt to draw, the more you will get into focus mode. Who, that is? Who is that? Yeah. <laughs> it's a painting by the artist we were discussing. Oh. Yan Pei Ming. You missed the slideshow. Sleep is important. Yeah. No, it's not important to you. It's important to me. I got to sleep. Take your time. Get a big pink eraser. Erasing is wonderful. Let's 
insist that you take a big piece of raisin. It's a great problem. Sure, it's clean. Test it out on the clean piece of paper. But it's all sticky. Oh, I know who you don't like. No, but I Agnes Martin. Liz. And they can see it. And so the fur. After the huge. I love it. He stopped for me. Over like an egg. Big at the top. Smaller at the bottom. You know how an egg is? Yeah. Big at the top. Smaller at the bottom. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, this face is nice and big. It's three quarters so of short. Yes, yeah, so you've got it ready. One eye is a little bit higher than the other. Yeah, like this is. You just have to work with it. You have her ready. Start with the wrench. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doing great. I like the drama of the spin. Are we okay, everyone at home? Nice. Off to a nice start. Um, I, I have a question. Sure, Karen. <laughs> it's the same question that I asked you before. 
um, proportionally, the um, the eyes, um, the nose, it, the bottom of the nose is halfway between the um, the pupil of the eye. No, no. So look at me. Okay. So eyes are almost halfway down the face. Well, I'm trying to get you on the. Okay, eyes are halfway. Got it. The nose is halfway between the eyes and the chin. Okay, eyes and chin. Okay. And it doesn't have to be exact. Don't stress about it. And then the mouth... The mouth is halfway between the nose and the chin. Okay, thank you. So it's just a guideline. It doesn't have to be exact. Once you have drawn your eye, you can measure the eye length the length of the nose from the bridge of the nose to the tip of the nose should be the same. That's why starting with the eye is always a good idea. Okay, keep asking questions, Aaron. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so this is kind of a three-quarter profile, so it's a little more challenging. You're doing great. So the nose is not straight. It's off to the side. Just be aware of that. Well, now that you've drawn an eye, now you can actually measure. So let's see. So your guideline is down a little bit too far. I would bring it up to here. Because remember, the nose, and the bridge of the nose, the tip of the nose, the nose is one eye length. Yeah. Perfect. Oh, how great. What a face he had. The bad, his ideas were used for bad purpose. Oh, what? Huh? Oh, this is the first time going. We were talking about the first time. Now we're done. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of merging between him and Oppenheimer. Yes. <laughs> Even Oppenheimer said, sorry. Well, you know what? <laughs> this year, it's not the only bad thing I see how far I'm trying to do. Okay, this is wonderful. Now, you're not doing full face. So this okay. is challenging. When you're finished with the feature, you're going to revisit this distance. Too big. Too big. But don't worry. One thing I want you to look at though is this excuse me. This see how small the white of the eye is? Um I can see it's a little bit more dark than it. You see this shape mm -hmm. right here? Mm -hmm. Very small. So now what is that in the eye? It is much it feels almost the whole part. Yeah, it's more than that. Maybe. Well, but you just you just spread your your nose way here, just very gently to the inside of your eye, just right at the outer edge of your nose. Oh, I feel an outline. Yeah, it's right here. If you think a particularly difficult picture to do because his face is so small. Oh, 
everyone to just take the previous two cards as well. Yes. That's the same for every person. So each one want to take some of the three of the models for your eyes on this one, or for your eyes on the other one? So you can take your eyes on the other one. Nobody's eyes are too big. <laughs> Nobody's eyes are too big. Their eyes are proportional to their brains. That's an old wives' tale that somebody's <laughs> eyes are too big for their brains. Whoever said that to you was fine. Um, I have a hard time with the problems finding the lessons that fit because the bridge of your nose is a little bit flat. I have the same problem. You see, you know, my eyeglasses never sit back. They always slide forwards like this. I think it's about the fact that this part of your nose is flat. And that has nothing to do with your eyes and the size of your eyes. So what you might want to try is instead of the kind of flat thing here, try something flatter and smoother. Because that must be annoying. It is. It's the same distance as the length of your eye. Maybe are just exactly two. Okay, egg shape. I'm gonna try it. <laughs> I'm not looking straight at it. Listen, look stop in the back of that. Egg. Wider at the top, right? Narrow at the bottom. So if you need to, you might have to apply it. I arrived at that conclusion there. Okay. So good. But it's got to be wider. First thing I want to talk about is surrounding it. Two parts. I like the one more. It's the ground part. 
Mas eu fui hoje, pá. Tipo, é. Folks at home, we have any questions? We're doing good. Awesome. Thumbs up. I'm happy. Yes, you, I'm coming. Yes, they're closer. See where the bottom, look at the distance. And the top lip to the nose. Remember, when you move the nose up, you only measure the distance. So now the mouth is going to come way closer. Yeah. So very close to the bottom of this mouth. Well done. Things can change. With guidelines, you may find the guidelines aren't in the right place anymore. That's still good. So we want to make this bigger. Colored white is going to get bigger. Is it on two picture because the eyes are so small and the every almost the every part of it? Yeah. If it's your picture, you've chosen a very small picture. And I wanted to say before mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this is a bit extreme. <laughs> so my suggestion is erase this line and bring it down more and then okay. But this is way to clean this white space. So I would make this bigger and curve the line down here. It's it's closer on this side to the way it should be. Um, the paper is very black, very, very black. Ah, so don't be afraid to make that dark, but leave that little tiny spot right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or she will be dead. This is up too high. <laughs> oh, I already left it. Stop. Because I don't think we had stopped. We didn't get it. So the eyes are down. Look at this. So now, thank you. You don't have to worry so much about the shape of the space yet, but you want to worry about the features. And so put in the guideline for the eyes and try to do as high as That's your bone. I landed the eyes. Is it the are the eyebrows above this bone or on the line? Yes. Okay.
Yes, this is very good. Um, don't forget the lower lip. Okay, so look. Yeah. Look at this part now. Look at me. Yeah. This part. Okay, it's quite dark underneath now. worry about it too much now. I just wanted to see where it was going. That you do last. The shape of the head comes last. Yes. Yeah. Great. Okay. Well, that oil pastel. I thought it was it was a charcoal. This is oil pastel here. Oh. Oh no, I'm wrong. It looks like oil. It's it's never off. mind. It's charcoal. It has a shine to it. Okay, we must be doing well. Um, So, do we want to do sharing today, or do we want to keep drawing? If we want to share today, we have about 10 more minutes. Fair enough. I want to take a picture go this way. Yes, but don't don't worry about that now. Try try and get the shading okay. on this way. And then we'll worry about this. This this is way too big. We're gonna work on that at the end. Okay. Oh yeah, this is coming along well now. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, this is good. Mm -hmm. Now, you could droop it down a little bit more. Mm -hmm. This is old. Mm -hmm. That's up to you. Another thing is, in the center of the eye, it's quite black. You're missing one part of the eyeball. I'll be right back. I'm going to borrow this for a second. Yeah. So there's the color portion, and then there's the retina. Mm -hmm. So it's very black in the middle. Oh, mm -hmm. You don't have to erase. You need to oh. add more black. Very small part of the eye is very black. Should look up the next picture. Then you got one. I don't know why I like all the psychological Yeah, you have to go off and you just can't. So the iris, mm -hmm. the colored portion of the eye is the iris. And then there's a darker pink. The pupil is the little black. The iris is the pupil. pupil is the black. The iris is the color. 
you can. And the white of the eye is called the sclera. Sclera? Yes. S C L E R A? Yes. Okay. So the iris is the colored portion. And then the black pupil. So what is the retina? Inside. You don't see it. I don't think you see the retina. Okay. Behind you. Behind you. So it's where the eye, it's where the light goes in and reflects. Yes, you're right. Thank you. Longer. The hair is long. Yeah. Even though the fuzzy bit mm -hmm. on top, do that at the end. That his hair is quite long and mm -hmm. flow. Good. Good. Yeah, even though there's this very deep dark shadow here, I would blend the edges because it, it just looks strange. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. I would take this and blur it. Blur it into this. Mm -hmm. We blend it a lot. Okay. It looks very strange. Mm -hmm. That's a thesis that's round. So I want to show you this. Parts of the eye. First, the people. And the Irish. Barnett, yes, you, you're doing it well. You need the shading for the really good. Make the white spots smoother, mm -hmm. and it doesn't have to be round. Mm. It's just like a little oh, jaggedy splotch of mm -hmm. light that shines. Jaggedy yeah, splotch, I like that. Yeah, it's a good word. <laughs> you yeah. done? Well, even if we share, you have like seven minutes. You could start in you could start a new one. You probably won't finish it, but you could start another one. Who is that person, Daniel? Is it someone you know? Yeah. Very, very, very is that guy who touched my life. Guy who changed your life. A teacher? No. I'll tell you. You know what I'll tell you. Well, you, you can't show it now. People are working. All right, I'll show it. So that's why I said you have seven minutes. Seven seven minutes from now, you can show. All right. Oh, you could if you want.
Now it's the So, another few minutes, and I'm going to share an optional today. Those of you who want to share, May. Um, we're going to start sharing with folks here. Yeah. Oh, I know. Well, I guess I could respond to that. Bring this line down. You see how it's very dark. Mm -hmm. I would just make this whole thing dark. Okay, so bring this line down. You see how the iris mm -hmm. is right up against. The edge in the corner of the upper, where the upper and lower eyelid meet. You see that? Mm -hmm. It's shoved right because of the way her gaze is. Her iris is shoved right into the corner. The eyeball is right in the corner of the upper and lower. It must hurt. I hope she didn't hold it that way for long. Yes, this is wonderful. It needs more hair. Mm -hmm. It should go right up to the edge oh. of the paper. Go wild with the hair. Oh. Mm -hmm. It really looks like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent. Um, this distance is a little large. This is what I want to help. Let me see if I can articulate. You see how it's closer to the edge of the mouth? It needs to be a nine or nine and here, and then the chin and the front edge. Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, she's sorry, I'm not Gary, I'm sorry. Could you take three phone call outside?
Um, so we're at sharing. Oh, I have to stop the share of this picture. Sorry to those of you who are drawing Obama. I have to shut it down now because we're doing sharing. And Daniel is up first. He's going to show his work. It's pretty magnificent. Wow. Who is this person, Daniel? That's Osama Tezuka. He is known as the godfather of manga. Of what? He, 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 oh, he, I know who this is. Yeah, my favorite artist of all time. Really? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I love him too. He's known for being the creator of Astro Boy, Jack Black Yag, uh, uh, Jungle, Jungle Emperor, wow. and many more. Wow. He influenced my life, and he's kind of like my hero, my style, oh. uh, artistic style. Yeah, it's great. It's well done. Very, very strong lines, and. Daniel did this all with charcoal, no pencil. Yes, I did. Yes, I did pencil with uh, at oh. least for uh, for the guidelines, and then I. Uh, oh, you I, did. But I did, but I did erase them because I drew them so light. Well, it's excellent, 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 really fabulous drawing. And just to wait some time, it's a small caricature of Obama. <laughs> <laughs> also terrific. With the ears, he's yeah. funny. He does have funny ears, for yeah. for sure. And big, big teeth. And also, his wife always makes fun of him because uh, he still smokes, and it's done terrible things to his teeth. <laughs> she seems to think so. Michelle seems to think well, so. Well, I know that Michelle is a, a bit of a health freak, but yes. Uh, but I don't care if Obama smokes or not. It's his life. All right. Well done. The drawings are beautiful. Thank you, Daniel. Anyone else here who wants to share? We've got some really terrific drawings here today. Okay. Please listen. Come on up, Nicola. And who is this beautiful person? Look uh, at this great drawing. It is. This is my daughter looking at daughter. me with contempt. <laughs> Contempt. Yes, like, why are you taking a photo of me? But, you know, <laughs> ever so slightly, so I'm trying to still get that attitude in here. How old is she now? 17. Yeah, well. <laughs> you have the photo that you used? That is amazing. Thank you. Just following instructions. I did um, 
while she was um, giving us instructions, I did this little one here. Beautiful. So it kind of like reminded me of all these things that you taught. Little details. Well done. If you show it to your daughter, we want to hear her reaction. <laughs> I can't believe she's 17. I remember when she was so young. She used to bring her to these classes. Long, long time ago. Anyone else? Please. I'm really thrilled with the drawings that you've done today. Come on. I, I'll show you mine. I have. Okay. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> Karen, you have to. I have to pin you. Um, so in one minute, I have to. Oh, there you go. Mm. Wow. Karen, this is fantastic. I love the eyes in particular. Really well done. I have one suggestion. Yeah. I would give this person more hair on the top of the head. You know, um, this is Barack, by the way. Um, and, uh, you know, I started using the um, guidelines. And then I, I always look at the hair first. The hair is always something that attracts me. And I, wanted, I needed to put that in to know what I was doing. And I just couldn't get the hair. I, so anyway. Um, yeah, a little more hair. But it's a beautiful, top, beautiful drawing. Top. And the proportions are fantastic. You yes. did extremely well. I think the eyes are um, not right. Somehow the mouth. No, the eyes are the best part. You think so? Really well, well done. Portions I, I just wanted to kind of get right. You take a picture of it, email me a JPEG. Okay. With all of your questions, and I will try and answer them for you. Okay, I will. Thank you. You're this welcome. Was, I'm so glad I came to the class. It's Come again. It's very easy to register, right? Yeah, it was. <laughs> okay, good. Hopefully we'll see you next week. Yeah, one day I'll get to Hoboken. But not, not well, to you can come on Zoom. It's so easy. Yeah, it is. I feel like that the people who came worked a little harder to get getting there than it, Zoom is easy. Most of the people here just walked here, so don't oh, feel that. Okay. I can't do that. Anyway, thank you. It was good to be here. Good. Welcome back. Robin, you look like you're ready to share. Oh, wait. What do you think? <laughs> Let me spotlight someone here wants to share. Being back. It's very beautiful. You can see the photograph. She was working from it. Looks exactly like the woman you were drawing. Wow. Beautiful drama in the shadow. The lights and darks are fantastic. Yeah. Bravo. I love I this. Very moment. good. Well done. Thank you. Very cool. Okay. Liz, Robin, I'll share. share. Yes. This is the okay. photograph. Wait, 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 wait one working. second. Wait one second. Okay, that's the person you're doing the portrait of. Beautiful oh. lady. Show us your drawing. It's good. This is. Oh, good. I love drawing. this drawing. And, and it's going to uh, be really nice. Wow, it's going to take Robin. a long time. Yeah, but I, to get her teeth in there where she looks like she looks. It's going to be a feat, so I'm going to continue to work on it. But I if got a little bit of If you're worried about drawing teeth, here's the suggestion. Less is more. Just the very lightest suggestion of the teeth. Okay? Okay. Hey, people are obsessed about trying to get the teeth in exactly. Do as little as possible. Just a few lines for suggestion. And keep the lines light. It's hard to draw. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Chris, thanks. Bravo. Right the line work in that, Robin, is just exquisite. You've yeah. got a great drawing there. Um, Courtney, did you want to share? Uh, yeah, sure. This um uh this is an Eleanor Roosevelt um, my picture. Hero. 
Um, and oh my gosh, this is magnificent. Here's the result. She really captured us. Well done. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Will you send uh, me a JPEG when you're finished, please? I will. Yeah. It's my camera is so lousy. You can never quite see what I've done, but. Uh, <laughs> but drawing from your it's phone enough. like that is really difficult. So you should feel very good about this. I say you can't Beautifully see done. <laughs> Sorry? Beautifully <laughs> done. Oh no, Margo said something. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, but sorry. Margo, the, the outline of the hair is very faint. <laughs> yeah. But you yeah. see the face really well. Yeah. Yes. And you know, one way you can um highlight white or light gray hair is to put a little bit of shadow behind the head, which I'm I, sure you yeah. thought of already. I didn't fill in the hair yet at all. I I didn't get to the hair or the clothes. Yeah. So it's well, you just can see face. why you spent so much time and did such a beautiful job on the face. So, can you show your, your drawing again. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Yeah. And did you start with the purport using the proportions? I, it's great. It really is. I good. Um, I I tried, but I just felt like it wasn't. I wasn't getting. It wasn't her. It wasn't quite working, and so I ended up mostly doing it by freehand. Um, I it's it's not perfect. That's Sorry, for dang sure. <laughs> but uh, perfect overrated. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's style is different. You can use guidelines. You can ignore the guidelines. You can start with the guidelines and then stop using them which is what I do. I always start with the guidelines and then I get rid of them as I go. So they're a good starting point for some people and then you can eliminate as you go along. Yeah. All right. Margo, thank you, Courtney. Margo, do you wanna share? Yes, I'll share something I did earlier, not today, but in the same vein. Oh, I meant to. One second, sorry. Wow. This isn't Lauren, is it? No, <laughs> it's just a random picture. This is excellent. I like um, the dramatic shading. Very cool. Thank you. Great job, Margo. Send me a JPEG, okay? I want to look at it closer when I have more time. You got it. And Ellen, Ellen Friedman, are you a new student? Or is that E? Uh, Liz? Yes? Oh, Ellen was my friend that joined us one friend. time. Yes, your friend. She, she's been trouble getting on and I saw her name on but her picture isn't there so I'm not sure she knows how to you oh, know, well. navigate to be able so to Ellen, hi it. I'm so glad you made it and I hope you got to do a drawing today and if you want to send me a picture of your work maybe Robin can help you figure out how to do that you look great. Else? you look great I, I observed today today I observed Thank you so much. Oh, okay. Great, Ellen. Welcome back. I'm so oh, glad it's, you came. It's a great class. It's a great class. Thank you. Oh, good. I love being here. Well, we're delighted to have you. Thank you so much. Anyone else here want to share? I think we may have run out of time. Not sure. It's yeah, it's 12 now. All right. So, happy new year, everyone. Yeah. I will see you all in 2024, new month, new theme, new agenda. We will start refreshed in the new year. No, we're going to think positively. 2024 is going to be the best ever. See you all soon. And those of you who work with me at the Multipurpose Center, we will be having class next Tuesday.